Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again, folks, to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we just, we're just we not going to stop. We're going we're gonna to get right into this situation here right now. What we're going to do at this particular show and this particular issue, we're going to give you an update of the education of education here within the state of Oregon. We'll throw a little bit about it from a national perspective, but we're going to come to Oregon. We're going to talk about education in Oregon, where we're going, where do we, how do we get there, and at the end of the day, uh, what, the, what about graduation? What about productivity? What about jobs? I mean, the bottom line, we're going to talk about education. Hey, there's, there's only one person in this state that I, as far as I'm concerned, I recognize as having the kind of a background and to talk to this particular issue. I'm talking about Steve Buell. If you look at his background, the man, is, he's been in the, in the teaching profession over 40 years. He was a former Portland Public, Portland Public Schools uh, board member, if you will, on that end of it. He's an activist in his own rights. He's attended all sorts of meetings. I mean, you've seen him on this show once before. Uh, you know, he's very concerned about kids, uh, the education of kids. He, he knows the classroom, and that's really what it's all about. It's the classroom, folks. Not the politics of the classroom, the classroom. The, the end, at the end of the day, graduation. Okay, so with that, Steve, welcome back. In fact, it's my understanding he's, he's involved, he's one of the founders, if you will, of t talking to this subject, Oregon, Oregon Save Our Schools. That's a, that's an, a newly formed organization. He's one of the founders. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how, why did they, uh, I mean, how did he go about uh, uh, being a part of finding this organization, what's his purpose, what's his goal, and what's the end of the day, okay? With that, Steve, how you doing? Pretty good. As usual, you're much too kind. Bruce, oh, no, but, gee, well, you know, no, we're never too kind. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's very important that uh, Oregonians need to know. I mean, that's the bottom line. They need to know what's going on. I mean, you got the media out there. They, they're throwing out information. They see all sorts of characters, as you know, and from the state of Oregon standpoint, the governor basically elected to be the superintendent of schools yep, and education. Superintendent of schools now. He's superintendent of schools. He, he recently hired a gentleman by the name of Rudy Crew, a guy who has been going around the country supposedly has kind of like put things together if you will and uh, hopefully productive but the bottom line is that he's got his own school board he's got his own person out there as, as, as his own assistant his superintendent and things are happening so the bottom line Steve we want to know what's going on so let's just touch bases just briefly uh, what's what's the from a national perspective what do you think about uh, President Obama's situation what is the selection of, uh, uh, of the uh, the uh, education Czar, right? Educate well, yeah, no, Arnie Duggan's been Arnie in the education okay, right. head for a long time. Uh, basically, they've been consistently going down the wrong uh, the wrong path. Uh, in what way? Kind of like just something. Well, there, they kind of there, there's a movement in the country that's the corporate education movement. Really, mm -hmm. it's the reform movement, and it's basically corporations with a lot of money and some major leaders, you know, the Waltons, the Koch brothers, Bill Gates pushing their agenda in education and, the, and Arne Duncan really has bought in on top of it uh, and it creates a lot of problems in the schools. It's creating a lot of problems in Oregon and it's creating a lot of problems across the country and uh, it's, really, it's one of the reasons that we helped start Oregon Save Our Schools is kind of to fight against this movement mm -hmm. that where corporations make a lot of money and the kids suffer while the kids suffer. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, you talked about it being in the classroom, and it's not like they're oriented towards the classroom, hmm. oriented towards uh, a lot of other issues that, in the long run, make them a lot of money. So I take it that, that, uh, that President Obama is going to probably retain Duncan for the next four years? I don't know. There's I'm no not, not privy in there to, okay, to right, that right. situation. So maybe, I would, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll revisit that maybe about a couple months from now. I, so. just, I just read a book uh, called uh, The Signal and the Noise that talks oh, about how mean? hard it is to predict things <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and what you really need to predict. I don't have enough to predict that one. I well, knowing you, buddy, I, I know we'll have some predictions. <laughs> so give, we'll give it a couple months and then we'll yeah, come I back and Yeah, I got some other predictions. We'll, we'll sure. visit some. Let's get, let's get down to the state of Oregon. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about um, the fact of the matter is about uh, Governor Kitzhopper, state of Oregon, governor of Oregon, uh, opted to go on and assume the chairperson of the school education. Talk a little bit about that. Well, what do you think about this? Well, what, what originally happened was the business community, uh, with a lot of leadership in Portland, a man by the name of Duncan Weiss is yeah. the head of the committees, they put together 
they put together an education plan, which I don't think makes a lot of sense, and most of the educator friends of mine don't think it makes a lot of sense. In what and, way, specifically? Because it doesn't directly deal with the schools. It's all periphery stuff, kind of indirect things. Uh, and, and they put together, they had a, a committee that they put together originally mm -hmm. called LearnWorks, which came up with these ideas, which were basically borrowed from the, the business community. And then they, they moved that into the governor's plan, borrowed again from the business community. Mm -hmm. And then the governor set up a, a committee to kind of say, should we, how, should, wh how should we be spending this money? And that committee was met in secret mm -hmm. and was basically borrowed from, you know, Duncan Weiss, the guy who was the head of the LearnWorks. Uh, guy now, is that the appointed board uh, you're talking uh, about? No, no. That, I, mean, I mean, haven't got to the appointed board, board yet. Board. Okay. No, but that was all set up. Well, set up and I so essentially what you have is a governor's plan. They're spending a lot of money. We estimate, when I say we, I mean Oregon Save Our Schools, estimates pretty close to $225 million wow. out of that, out of money. It's really not even in his education budget. It's set aside, and as I understand funds, it. But I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on that. Okay. And it's still right. kind of floating around down there. Okay. Uh, but that, that particular plan that he put forward is basically the business plan. So essentially, you had the business community in the state of Oregon and the city of Portland making the educational policy for the state of Oregon. Well, who's sitting on the board and, from, from an educational standpoint? Uh, what about Susan Castillo? Was she part of, part of that process? N well, there were some people who sat in on it, but it basically never changed from the beginning. And now you have, from that, from that came the that Oregon group. Educational Investment Board, which okay. is kind of the super board that the governor chairs when he doesn't chair it. A lady by the name of Nancy Golden, who was the superintendent, w w is retiring. She, she still has the superintendent of Springfield. She, she uh, chairs that board. I've gone to every meeting but two. I was in California two of those meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty bad. The only, there's only one education, there's only one teacher, actual K-12 teacher, on that, on that, on particular, that board. particular board, uh, and she's an OEA, the OEA rep, and she has <laughs> all sorts of questions mm. all the time. Well, what about Ron and, Sachs? You got you got a yeah, you got, you got Ron so, Saxton on the there. You got the Julia Brim Edwards, who used to be a school Nike board. Nike school person, board. business people, and right. a lot to a huge re And you've got see what they tried to do, what the governor's plan did, and that this isn't the what part we don't like about the plan so much. The, mm -hmm. the stuff we don't like is mostly the K twelve stuff. That's where there's they're not getting anything good in there. They they do some. They're trying to do a P20, you know, a, a birth to 20 system. So they get kind of what they call a seamless education system. Right. The, well, the, what do you mean? The, you so on that. so you take the you connect. You do a better job of connecting the preschool things to the to the K12 system, and you okay. do a better job of connecting the K12 to the. Uh, community colleges and the college system. Okay. And so you, you try and get a better flow, which which is the idea. And that basic idea, there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. really. It's how they go about the K-12 stuff that's really the mess. That they, they don't have, it's like they don't have any idea because they borrowed the business plan. It's like if I got all my school teacher friends and we all went down and decided we were going to run the business plan for some big company or for for the the uh, Portland Business Alliance mm -hmm. you know we were the ones who knew how to do it I mean, as if we do it's just it's the reverse of that and so it, it's crazy and Oregon's gone that way Kitz Opper's not an educator mm -hmm. he's he's uh, an ex-doctor and so when, in healthcare, he may be pretty good I'm not sure but I know in education it's pretty bad but he, but, he, but the claim is that he feels that he cares for kids and he's concerned about these dropout rates and this that and the other the, all the things that a lot of a lot of folks are concerned about that's the Don't you feel Exactly. With, with, with his, his no, position. I feel comfortable with how they talk. Like Rudy Crew, who's uh, who's really the and who's Rudy Crew for the benefit of uh, Rudy Crew was the ex superintendent of Tacoma, I think Sacramento, uh, Dade County, which is Miami, pretty mm -hmm. big, and New York. He was superintendent of schools in those places. He's a well-known educator across the country, and they hired him for about 280000 a year uh, to come in, plus a lot of benefits, to come in and kind of make this P20 system set it up. Mm -hmm. And when he goes out and talks, like he went out to Grant last week, and you might have seen some things in the newspaper. Yeah, his story had some nice kids. I, one kid wrote in and said, wow, he really inspired me and stuff. Yeah, he's a really good talker. 
He's a really good. But he also cited but, goals, goals for that board. Exactly. Well, that exactly. So he the, comes out and gives a good talk, which inspires people. Right. I have no problem with that. That's good. I love that. And then he has goals at the end. Okay. But what's in between? It's, it's a garbage dump in between. Hmm. They don't have anything really that's going to really reach the goals that they set out necessarily, but on top of that, the goals aren't the right goals. What were some of the goals that he was talking about? Well, the about? most of the, the major goal is, is the reading scores okay, right. and the math scores. They're all based around testing. The whole system is based around testing. And so when you read something like, for instance, he has a plan called the Oregon Education Investment Board Strategic Plan Summary. It just mm -hmm. came out. Everybody ought to take a look at that and see what it tells you. That, but the you? problem, is, you can access that at the OEIB website. OEIB. Yeah, Oregon Education Investment board website but the problem is when you read this it sounds pretty good but when you l really know what's going on behind it, it it's it's nothing there it's like going down through one of those facades in the old movie studios you know MGM and they had this beautiful city out there mm -hmm. and there's nothing behind it mm -hmm. that's the way well, what's the that's difference? the way this that's the way this working Ex example for instance you know they yeah. talk about achievement yeah well Achievement means, to you and I, achievement means a kid does better in school than he's doing, right? But in actuality, what the, the only achievement they're, will, they're willing to really talk about a measure is the test scores. And the test scores have a lot, the testing has a lot of major problems with them that, have, that are not being addressed. You know, they're focusing teachers who are giving all these tests and they're making it so important, they're, they're labeling your school. People thought, okay, no child left behind, they'll get well, us away. They'll that. get us away from labeling is the that, school because we didn't do the, the same waiver. Format? It's the, same uh, concept? the waiver isn't any different really. In fact, in, the, in some ways it's worse wow. because now the waiver wants you to kind of have the teachers measured based on the test scores, which of course it's not an accurate measurement, drive you crazy if you're a teacher because uh, it, 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 those particular, it doesn't work like that. You can't really take those test scores and get an accurate measurement for how the teacher's doing. It, for one thing, it's way too narrow, and two, it's statistically inaccurate. So why didn't they do away with the no child left behind well, uh, they, under the Bush administration? What's the deal? Because I thought, I thought Oregon was making the point early on that I'd say, hey, we need to get, get this thing out the way because it's causing us all kinds of problems here in terms of ratings, right? Yeah, and that's probably why they did away with it. So now all of a sudden they're bringing it back? Basically, it's the same thing. You oh still label God. the schools. Yeah. You still have all the testing. In fact, now they're going to increase the testing. And they have a whole new system of tests that they're going, because what they did, they, they came in and they took, this is how if you really look at education in a little depth, you, the people who are just out there and just say, hey, that sounds pretty good. We're going to have new standards. They call them the Common Core standards. Mm -hmm. Common Core, they're brand new standards. So we're going to increase the standards. Well, that sounds pretty good at the first, at first glance. Yeah, yeah, to increase the standards for kids. But what they, and they put them in 45 of the states, at least, have them. I mm -hmm. think California was, I think maybe 46 now, because California has them now. And they, what they basically do are just different, little different standards than what we had the Oaks test in Oregon. So you got a little different standards, and you have them in 45 states. So what do you need if you have new standards? Yeah. Well, you need new tests that test to the standards, right? So you got 45 states. These tests are not cheap. In Oregon, the last I heard, I wouldn't live or die by this statistic, mm -hmm. it was like $9 million just to correct the tests. What? Nine million just to correct the test. Hundreds of millions of dollars in for the for the cost of tests, say in Texas. I mean, there we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. The company that's going to ha have the testing or sell the tests, that whole thing, they're making hundreds of millions of dollars. They love it. Switch them all. It's not really because the standards go up. In fact, a lot of the standards they didn't even have teachers really involved in creating them. You know, I, I mean, it, the more you dig, the worse it gets. Hmm. And so you have these standards cross country, 45 states. There are 45 states, they sell the same test all the way across. So it doesn't cost them as much to make the test because they used to have to go do one for Oregon and do one for Washington. Washington has a different tests than Oregon. Now everybody has the same standards, going to have the same. There's two types of tests. The one Oregon is doing is called the SBAC. And, uh, and that particular test is going to be new, so somebody's making money there and making money here and making money there, and they're now want to put all the testing on computers, so you got to have enough computers, and then you got to have the computer programs, and then you got to re-up them. Mm -hmm.
every you know yeah, computers see, and all that. But, and so somebody's I'm making a listen, fortune right? and under what about the, the end of the day though? What about the what about the, the young people going into society? Are they prepared? No. They're not prepared. No, and they get they're not prepared anymore. They're not prepared anymore from the testing. In fact, the testing generally makes their education worse. I believe, and what? so does you know, we believe that the testing makes it worse because what it does, it focuses people down only on those tests. Not only, but I mean it focuses them down so strongly on the tests and the test scores. I mean that's all you know about school. Some schools now, you know, I give you a school, you say, hey, their test score, and I tell you what the test score is, but what are they really like? What kind of school is it? Is it really a good school, or is it just kind of focused around those tests? Because when you focus on the test, you do two things. One, the more pressure you put on, you're putting a lot of pressure on, teach to the test. You better believe it. And the second thing is you narrow your curriculum way down. So a lot of, you know, a lot of people believe that, well, at least they're paying attention to the kids' scores. Okay, well, so, but they, we always did that. But, let, but let's, let's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to sort of like act, act yeah, as, yeah, as, as yeah, a governor. Yeah. I'm going to act yeah. as a governor. Okay, the reason why I'm doing this, Steve, is the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, as you know, Intel and Nike now, I'm going to give them a tax break, and as a result of that, uh, they're going to guarantee me so many jobs for Oregonians, et cetera, in this particular state. So therefore, what's going to happen is that these kids are going to be graduating. They're going to be able to go to work for Intel and Nike as a result of what I'm doing here in the education system. Well, yeah. That, Am I preparing the kids enough to do this? No. Don't you and, think and, I'm doing that? And you're deluded, is what I think. <laughs> because the, the education isn't working particularly well, but the reason is the new reforms more than the old stuff. People talk about, okay, what's the status quo? Well, the actual status quo of education in the state of Oregon is testing and no child left behind. And now the waiver, which is not very much removed. That's the real status quo of the education. You don't think your kid's getting an education, and they're probably, they may not be. See, it, it, it breaks down in a couple ways. One, if you're in a poor school, economically poor, where the kids struggle generally more and the test scores are lower, then you're going to push those test scores, test, test, right. test. But if you're in a school where the test scores are fine, you're not going to worry about them. You're going to keep giving a broader education. So in essence, where people say, well, at least they're paying attention to poor kids now. It's the reverse, wow. generally, because the poor kids are now getting a way worse education even than they were before. I mean, there's things you need to do to get kids a good education. We're not focused on that at all. All we're doing, we're cutting, we're cutting the money. The money's been, you know, I mean, what, 324 yeah, teachers in Beaverton, you know, you, you try and find an uh, actual librarian wow. in a middle school. When I was on the school board back in 1981 or so, I right. had this deal with libraries. And one of the things I talked about a lot was that, a, like an elementary school, it should almost be built around the library. Right. You got kids reading, books, reading, yeah. books, reading books, but, yeah. but, yeah. but way more, the, and especially in a lot of homes where you, kids don't even have any hardly right, books. Exactly. And they, they don't get that encouragement that they need. So we take the library away, and instead we ram those tests. Now, is that a good education well, system? No. You know, no. that's a good that's a good point you raised. Let's go back during that particular time. Which one was, of these points you was a good one, Bruce? No, 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 no. The point that I'm making that was really good was when you were in fact on the board during that particular era. I can remember Benson High School. I can remember Voc Ed in the school. You know, Voc Ed is, is a and because disaster. poor kids have to have a reference of some sort to basically well, get into they the need to be in, and they need to be engaged in school. Yes. And so if you they were doing that at the time, yeah, why did we change? What's what's up? Well. What's the deal? The testing, there was a lot of the change. I mean, a lot of the change has come out of the testing. And also, excuse me, they, you, you, it costs you less money. Costs you less money? It costs you less. If you don't have a shop, then you save money. If you don't have a music program, Yeah, but kids were graduating. Save money. They, you they don't were have graduating. They were blue collar. Uh, they were getting into uh, blue collar jobs, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 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 I mean, they weren't necessarily going to college, per se, but they were working for a living. So what's the deal? I mean, can't somebody understand that piece about what people, Voc Ed meant to schools? The people run, they talk about it, but that's all they do. They talk about Why it. Why is that so? It's because it costs some extra money, and it's because, in my opinion, I yes, give you my opinion, right. my opinion is that one of the reasons, for instance, it disappeared in Portland is because the more well-to-do people who were running the school board, you know, Stanford Children, right. was always the well-to-do group of people who didn't give a rip about anybody except their own little more well-to-do schools. Those particular people, they 
why would they care about vocad? Their kids are the you know, their mom's a lawyer and their dad's a doctor. They ain't sending their kid in. But to don't be they a realize? Plumber. But don't they realize, Steve, that one of the biggest issues that they're talking about today is the taxes, if you will, the rich getting taxed over, et cetera, et cetera. Well, on the other hand, if the people down at the bottom were working for that, then they would relieve that some of that piece on that end. Would you think? I would think so. It was, I mean, but yeah. meaning that those people were able to work. On they, top of the fact that you also, that those types of classes and those types of things are what engage kids in school. Exactly. It, it, and, and, and that's the part that they don't, it's like they can't figure it out. I don't know what it is. They say, oh yeah, well of course, but then they don't do it. That's the Rudy Crew dilemma. Rudy Crew goes out and has these great talks, but then when you go down and you look at what he did, he's a writer basically of this this strategic plan. So somewhere. If you look at it and then you and you do a little studying and delve into it, you go, oh wait, this doesn't really do anything. Hmm. It doesn't really help kids per se or help your kids' school per se. It does all this other stuff out in the ether someplace. Not the upper class kids. We're talking about the kids down I'm in the I'm talking about any kid. On, on this down. stuff, I'm talking about basically any kid. Any None of this stuff helps any kid. Wow. It's not like it's wow. it's not like it's it's kind of biased towards well to do kids, which is what happened for about twenty years in Oregon because originally when Norma Paulus and Vera Katz did that original plan, I can't remember the name of it, in 1990, and we started testing in the schools, yeah. and they pushed the it through, college program. got it through the legislature, and there were two parts to it. One was the testing, mm -hmm. and the other part was the vocational ed part. Mm -hmm. And right in the front it said, we will only do this if we get the money. Wow. Well, they did the testing. They they did the and testing the thing and stuff. dropped the voc ed stuff and wow. so the voc ed stuff all went under you know Portland Public Schools sold the shop stuff off and you can't even but find Vera it but during that particular time you know she was a legislator during the, her, her whole motif was basically caring if you will for that blue collar piece a democrat the whole nine yard what, what's the deal here I don't know. I never. I never. I'm sure it's the same I th idea. You voice one th one thing and do another thing. I mean, you know, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say as a school teacher? Yeah, I'm. I don't like uh, black kids. Yeah, yeah. I don't like poor kids. Mm -hmm. I don't care about poor kids. Yeah, I mean, they don't dislike them, but they didn't care about the poor schools in Portland. I mean, look at this stuff lately where they're doing the school closures. And I am. I'm not up as well as I always used to be. I'm more, way more up on what the state's doing now because mm -hmm. that's where we're kind of focused at this mm -hmm. point in time, the legislature and everything. But. Look at this! Look at this stuff they did with the school closures. What were they closing? They were looking at closing Vernon or Woodlawn, Ockley Green. Whoa! There are twenty years worth of of. There's been twenty years worth of Portland not supporting those schools, wow. and so twenty years down the line they decide, oh, well, I guess we'll close them. Wow! But we didn't support them for twenty years. I don't think they have this bad attitude. Carol Smith has a little better attitude about it, I think. But still, you got to go back and look and say, hmm, we did, if we're going to do 20 years worth of rotten, basically rotten, uh, 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 rotten process, then we've got a responsibility at the end of that process to not act on the 20 years of our own rotten process. And which is basically what they were kind of doing. They're not sitting down and saying, yeah, for 20 years we favored these well-to-do schools and we didn't, and we, we, you know, screwed the poor schools, which is what they did mm -hmm. for 20 years. They don't say that. I mean, when have you heard anybody in the school district say that? Yeah, mm -hmm. for 20 years. So we need to rectify this situation and try and fix it. No, we'll close these schools. I mean, which school did they close? They closed Marshall. If you went back... A few years, Marshall was pretty good school, and it was a pretty big school. They used to have schools that were fairly equal, and then they went through this 20-year time period where they just messed with all those poor schools and and updated and you know uh, supported the more well-to-do ones. And so then they closed Marshall after they messed with it. I mean, uh, you don't have to go back too far to have 1,400 kids in Jefferson High School, right? That's right. That's right, and it's a pretty good school. People wow. thought. Wow. Or you go back to whatever happened to, we started Harry and Tubman Middle School. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And man, I've talked to people who went there and they said, wow, that was a great school. Mm -hmm. That was a really good school. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty big and good school. Mm -hmm. Where is it now? Where did it break down? Steve? I don't have Where any did it idea. Break down? I don't know the exact date. I mean, but I'm just kind of, it, it's but, everything kind of slowly has gone downhill because if you're only watching out for 
those four well-to-do schools which and is, their areas, which, well, the Lincoln, Wilson, uh, Grant, and Cleveland, if you're only really worrying about the, and really not even the, the kids who are poor in those schools, the more well-to-do kids, making sure those work, if that's what you're doing and that's where, and that's where your focus is, which it was for 20 years in Portland, then, of course, you're going to have a mess in those other schools, which is what they have. And, and so the question is, how do you correct that? And what, what do you think? Do you, you think there's things, I think there's things you can do to correct school. I have a philosophy, educational philosophy, that I think makes real good sense. What, what is and it? None of this. Basically, you, you, in a school, you, you go back to the type of education that we had, mm -hmm. 70s, 80s, 60s, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. That solid education where you have the programs in there, you have the library, you have the music, you have, and you engage kids. You do that. You have the athletics at school. We don't have any. I mean, I've, all, right. I've yeah, uh, on this. I've talked before on this how uh, <laughs> East Vancouver has where I taught Evergreen System had all sorts of athletics now. He's thousand kids in the school, 500 of them in music. You know, I had full football teams with uniforms in middle school, full basketball teams. I, and I've talked to that well, even a, a lot. Even outside of Portland. That. Even outside it's of Portland. It's just across the river. Yeah. And, uh, but we don't have any of that stuff. And people say, oh, yeah, but we have a foot basketball team in our school. Yeah, it's park department. It's not even tied in. The, the Up in Evergreen, the teachers are the coaches. So we got away from engaging. And that's what they were trying to do in the 70s, was set up systems that engage kids in middle school. And we kind of did that when they shifted to middle school. They were trying to engage them, but they weren't dealing with some things that needed to be. But you can't just go back there now and the, to the 70s or the 60s by itself and say, okay, that'll work, because it's not going to work exactly. But what you also need to do is you need to get the supports in for those children in those families that are breaking down and having okay, difficulties. Right, right, right. And right. of which there's, need that which there's all sorts of And that support needs to be Do they understand there. that? Do they really understand the well, fact that we've gone through Well, you know, you're back to the thing. Does Rudy Crew understand the problems, or does he talk about them like he thinks he like he does, and then not just not understand them enough to do them? I asked Diane Ravitch one time. Diane Ravitch is Who's one, Diane? Diane Ravitch is one of the best educators in the country. She wrote okay. a great book, uh, and, and she's big time. She used to be in Bush's stuff and saw the saw the failure of the testing culture and what we're doing with the corporate education stuff, and she figured it out. And she's become one of the leaders in the country. Uh, against those things, you know, the patron saint, so to speak, of organizations like hmm. Oregon Save Our Schools. And I, she was out here in Spoken Portland. We had a little thing for her, and uh, I asked her, I said, what's the deal with Arnie Duncan and Obama? Right. I, how come they can't understand this? You know, they say one thing and it ends up doing another. Can't they put it, th what is it? I said, do they just not understand it? Are they confused about it? Are they, I mean, what's the deal? She says, no, they're just lying about it. What? She says they're just lying. If anybody about should know they're about the education fee, is the Chicago school district. They're just lying I mean, about it. Shootings she says, she says, and oh my that was, God. She thought they were just lying kids. about it. And, and I'm going, wow. Lying about it. The Obama wow. administration. Wow, wow. I mean, the, but. The, the point is that you then need to have those other supports. So you need to tie those two things together and to make this education work. And the way you really need to do that is to go back into the schools themselves. You can't go in the state and pass this thing and pass this thing or even tell them this goal or that goal. It doesn't, because every school is different. Every school is different. And so some schools, maybe in the fourth grade, Classes are really good. You got really good fourth grade teachers, but but the music isn't too good. But you got a good uh, principal does a pretty good job. But the, the custodian's a jerk, or vice right, versa. Right, right, right. Normally, yeah, it's yeah, vice yeah. versa. Really, uh, often <laughs> in my experience, and and, and you have. Uh, you do a real nice job, maybe with kids who speak other languages, but you don't. You're not so good with special ed, and you do real good with reading, but you're a little weak in math. Every every school has all these infinite numbers of categories that you need to deal with, and so you have to actually be in that school and look and say, okay, here's the problem, and you have to, and and here's what we can do about it, and here's what we're doing to try and fix these problems in the school. The whole idea that you, this stuff comes from the top down is it just doesn't work. Wow. Hey, folks, we're, we're talking with Steve Bueller by. Up Update, give you an update, if you will, on the true 
the true definition of what's going on here in Oregon uh, on an education system and where are we going to be going with that. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. We're going to open up the line the next half hour. Please join us in this discussion. If you've got some questions, whether it's school closure, where your kids are, blue collar, white collar, rich kid, poor kid, give us a call, okay? It'll be on the screen. We'll take a short break. Mm -hmm. uh, data. This Let's talk about the data. can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. And I'm sure that at these various meetings that you all go, the people from Oregon Save Our School go to, do you have the opportunity to voice those opinions? Yeah, we, right we, in front of we the, voice them, and they give you two minutes to talk. Two minutes? Two minutes How to you talk. Do We're doing a whole hour, you know, we just barely, two minutes, just barely get two minutes, touching that. Two, two minutes, minutes to That's talk it. at the OEI B Board meetings. And there, Rudy Crew came and talked to us. We talked to him. We sat down and talked to him about... Uh, he how, came, how did he, he react came, to some of the things we were talking He came about. and he talked, and we gave him a lot of the stuff I've been giving you. Right. And, and more. Has and he come back? When, he they were, when, they, when he was done, he listened. And... Listened? He listened. And? And he never... He, we have maybe 300 years worth of experience of educators who are all really on top of. We have we got a guy out in Park Road, who out in uh, Reynolds, who's a fabulous reading teacher. Say we got guys who worked with the Oregon Education Lab and followed this stuff and on top of it. And we had all we got all sorts of, of really good resources. We're a good resource. Anybody ever goes to right, fa right. Facebook, Oregon Save Our Schools, Facebook, a lot of resource stuff, or to our website, a lot of resource wow. stuff, a lot wow. of stuff you can borrow and and use. But he never asked one question. He never asked one thing, like, what do you think about this? And he went and didn't do any of the stuff that we talked about, none, zero. Well, let me ask you about the, about the, actually, the chairperson of the board, and that is the governor. Mm -hmm. Have you had the opportunity to talk no, to the governor? No, you can't really, you gotta stand in line. And then they give you maybe 15 minutes, something like us, you get lucky. Wow. Now the governor, we're, we're not very popular, I'm sure, with the governor, because we've been banging on his plan. We're just saying, come on, give us some meat, do something that directly affects well, the schools. You know, so the governor isn't very, you know, big friends. Or Ben Cannon now, Ben Cannon was probably the best, almost, in my opinion, almost the best legislator that was down there for years. He's the governor's advisor. And what's up? He what's talks up? a good game, but it's the same thing. You don't really, he doesn't, I don't think, I like Ben Cannon a lot, but he doesn't get what we're talking about. Would you be interested if we were able to get Ben here on the, on the yeah, show? Yeah, but he won't get what we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> any more than he, and, I mean, I've, yeah, I like him, I send him stuff, but, but he's a private, for one thing, he was a private school guy. He's in private school, he worked in private school. Private schools are a lot different. I mean, I worked 10 years out there in, in uh, middle school out across 52nd in the southeast where 30% of the people in that attendance area had been in prison when I was there. I mean, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a hard school. Well, and, you know, in all due respect. And, uh, where's the, you know, you get a little background that's different. You look at it different. The people out in Reynolds now, we have three really excellent, outstanding teachers from Reynolds on, on our, that work with us mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and they they have a sense of what's going on in those poor communities. I don't think that carries well, but you know, over. But what I'm hearing, and that's why you're on the show for that matter, I'm hearing you, and I feel comfortable in understanding, you all are trying to address, if you will, those areas of the unproductive, unproductive citizens after they've graduated, after those, uh, those, 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 those mandatory years in school, if you're K-1 to K-12, to be productive. And we're not, they're, they're not productive, and that's what we're or trying to address. Or how about maybe making them educated? If they yeah. were educated, they could be more productive. That's what I'm saying. We, we yeah. just think that the education, that, it's this, very important. that this stuff, the governor's plan, the education that the governor's plan, which is actually the business plan, right. is oriented towards business stuff, not oriented towards children. And if you want to, you know, I, it's the same old story. If you yeah. want to talk about education, get those educators in there to talk about what the real problems are. And most of them can't be solved here anyhow. You got to get down in the schools to do it. Have you, you had the opportunity? Have you ever the opportunity? Money will help you, but it doesn't have solve you, have, it. Has the group had the opportunity to maybe uh, maybe get uh, former Mayor Vera Katz and and, and former. Uh, Secretary of State Noah Paulus to sit at the table because they were the two uh, yeah, the leading forces. I think they're long they're gone. Talk to this people. Long gone from education, both of them. But they're very much. But they're ago. still interested. If you well, will. yeah, but they're gonna. They're gonna. This is their stuff. 
You know, this is their stuff. It's the it's the reform movement in America, the corporate reform education, corporate education reform movement in America. But don't they have, understand? Like no, we go back. No, the, the question is they don't. They're having no. Uh, the well, the country's in a in a demise, man. We're having some tough times. I mean, we're getting ready to go into There's another generation. You want to spend money I mean, on education? We're just pushing, you're criminal, to, we're just pushing the criminal justice system. I mean, putting it right at the front of the deal. A lot of folks can't make it. A lot of the reason that, uh, yes. The, you know what I'm saying? They, they call it the school to prison pipeline. Exactly. It's because the failure of the schools. But the, the problem is there are some really good arguments about the failures of the schools. I mean, I'm not arguing that the schools are perfect. They're not nearly as bad as people want to make out right, to right, believe. But, right. they're, but they're, they're, they're not perfect. They don't, but at the rate we're going, though. And, and, well, the rate they're going, now the, the, the graduation rates are going up, supposedly. But the... Uh, oh, but supposedly. The, now, wait a minute. Yeah. You've got to define that now. I, I don't say... Come on. you got to define that, buddy. Well, I'm just Please saying, define that for well, me. Well, I'm just saying... I mean, we, we're still here in this business about, hey, we're going to have to go out to foreigners and bring them in this country to take... These well, jobs, you yeah, know, you can intel, graduate kids, but can they can Nike. they do that stuff? You know, they talk about the the stamp. Look, we got a call. We got a call here. Okay, call you on the air. Your question or comment, please. Yes. Yes. Hello. Go on, caller. Hello. Yes, we are. We are going on. Hello. Yes. Yeah. I, I I attended a town hall with Rudy Crew, and and we uh, talked about somebody there talked about uh, well, why don't you look to Corbett schools because apparently what? people come there from all over the country because he's done such an exemplary job and I don't see and Rudy Crew didn't he hadn't didn't hear anything about it or didn't say he would follow up on it no, it was, so there's examples out there of best practices that could be uh, followed and I think until until the um, you know the, the Schools have a virtual monopoly because you know temper, only about ten percent of people can really afford private schools, and right, right. and uh, and so there are people, parents are really trapped there. And I, I think you, unless you give a day of a perverse incentive not to, uh, uh, to to not to succeed, I think because if they if they succeeded, what would happen? They couldn't ask for more money. Right. So that's uh, that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carla. Want to respond? Well. I don't th if if there's a conspiracy, it's a really up in the business community at really high levels in the business community. But why? It's not uh, because they're making money, and that's they're all making they, money. They care less about the well, they, generation among the kids. It, it, there's also I'm trying to think the of a, I'm trying to think of a good taxes. I'm trying to think of a good analogy where everybody can. Well, I'll give you a good analogy when we. Uh, uh, the, the whole west coast of the United States during World War II uh, when they sent uh, Japanese Americans off to detention camps, right. people said, hey, yeah, that's okay. Hmm. Right? A so lot of people that, said, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah, needs yeah, to be done. Yeah. Well, after the war, people looked back and said, Woo, that wasn't right. A, it was against the Constitution, and B, uh, it really wasn't the way that go went about, should have gone about it. And you had, I mean, it's a kind of the same thing now. You had, but there were people, I'm sure, saying then, hey, that's not a good idea. But now you've got kind of the same idea. It's Regardless. we're going to make, we're going to, there's a way to look at the education system that's not particularly right. Yeah, and they make the argument on one level, but they don't go down in the depth. You know, teachers, the, the, the number one of the great arguments is, uh, the best thing, the the most powerful thing in a child's life in education is the teacher. The teacher is the difference maker. Right. So what we need to do is improve those teachers. Right. And so that sounds wonderful. Yes. Yeah, but it's not. But the way they go about it doesn't improve anybody. Basically, in fact, it often makes it worse. And they're driving teachers out of the schools who are very good teachers because of the way they go about it. It's the stuff sounds fine. You can read through Rudy Cruz's thing and say, well, what's wrong with this? Why would he complain about this? It sounds fine. Right, right. But when you dig in, like with the stuff with the, the minority hiring, you find out, whoops, that's not exactly how it really, no, it's not what I thought. Charter schools. Most people think of charter schools, I think I can't say most people, but a lot of people think of charter schools. That's the way to go with this. Because they, you get away from the restrictions of the school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but not anymore. Now the charter schools are mostly money-making machines for people who have a lot of money. And if you look at them enough, and they're not particularly successful either. And they still pick and choose who they want. 
often. And so they're not successful. They pick and choose they want, but it sound, the idea sounds good. But when you dig down, and that's what we've been trying to do in the last year at Oregon Save Our Schools, dig down and see what's really going on down there. When you get down there, you go, whoa, there's things that need to be fixed. But this isn't like it sounds. It's like the, this strategic plan summary, you read it, it won't sound too bad. Call me on the phone and we'll talk about it and you'll go, oh, oh, I didn't understand that. I was talking, you were earlier, before the show, you talked about Michelle Ree. Yep, right. Who sounds pretty good. I, start, I have an, an uncle who's a... Former, who, former superintendent of what, Washington, Washington D.C.? Yeah, yes. yeah. And, and, and she's I, have an, I have an uncle who's really a bright guy. And we've talked a lot about education. And we had a discussion last week. I mean, he's 88, but smart, sharp mm -hmm. as a tack. Mm -hmm. And he said, I heard Michelle Ree, and she sounded pretty good. Wow. Yeah, she did. And then we started talking about what it really was and how it really worked, and he's going, oh. Wow. See, that's what it, and it's, you've got people who, in their, it's in their best interest. You take Stanford children. How come that Stanford children would push for this when they talk about being for kids? Well, they, they get a lot of money. They money. get a lot of money. It's all they, about they get, the money. They get grant money. Because they're, if they're doing stuff, if they come out and talk and say, what you really need is to get down in those schools and fix it at the school level, which is what I believe you really need to do, and I think that's true, in my, at least that's what I think. And if they said that, nobody's going to send them grant money. Wow. You get grant money for project type things. You don't get them for, why don't they just take all that grant money and put it into librarians? See, look here, this, this is really serious because in all due respect, what I'm hearing you saying, it's all about the money aspect of it. Well, it's and not the, all, but a huge amount of it is. Of it, and the people down on the low end, it really is just about the money. So in all due respect, the only thing I see them graduating is in the criminal justice system, i.e. building more prisons, i.e. the private sector. They can too. talk about Jeez. how they want to do stuff for them, but when in actuality, when you look at what they're doing, it ain't doing it. It ain't doing it. And then you hear the other piece about the Intels of the world and the Nikes of the world. Hey, we're going to deal out with the with the state, if you will, i.e. the taxpayers saying, okay, fine, we'll give you so many jobs if you give us a tax break, et cetera, et cetera. But to whom? Well, you got the Ron Saxtons on the OEIB board, but a lot of times he doesn't even show up. Wow. Well, hey, buddy. Look like we're going to have to spend some more time on that. I'd like to invite That's another, another group of, Oregon, here of Oregon Save Our School, and maybe we can, maybe, uh, I'm glad you came up with this update, and we'll just do it, in, do it again at another point in time. Appreciate that. Okay, well, the one last thing to mention is the legislature's going on. Real quick. And I'd say make yourself, make yourself heard at the legislature. Sounds great. Okay, fine. Well, hey, look. At least for more money. At least yes, for more money. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, we have been talking to Steve Buell, again, of the, one of the founders of Oregon Save Our School. Please keep up the good work. And it's very important, folks. I mean, maybe some of it might not have made any sense to you, but the bottom line, it is a very serious situation. It's about uh, the education system, and it's about the future of this state, i.e. future taxpayers. And these folks are going to have to be productive. That means they're going to be educated. Again, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week with another good program. Take care. Have a good one.